All right, so I, uh, I hope that I have convinced you that um, starting open the goals, you can uh, study hitching vibrations, right? So the, now, um, uh, so we have, again, C is uh, a smooth projective curve. I didn't tell us this is the kitchen vibration. I'm telling now, yes. <laughs> okay. And given with a lie band on L, usually of high enough degree. And now I'm looking at the, um, the moduli space M of map from C to this quotient stack. So G mode G, G acting by adjoint action, and, and mode GM, where GM is acting by the homote C, which is commute to its adjoint action. So this is the lying. So let me call this M over, over the lie bandon, the fixed lie bandon L. So this is literally the moduli stack of Higgs bandons. Um, in the case of Hitchin, he considered it um, G, this label should be a canonical bandon, but you do not have to care about this now. Um, <clears throat> uh, and uh, by composing M with the map from G mod G to G mod mod G, you get this, this called Hitchin vibrations. H from A is now to C. To G mod mod G, and then mod stuck by GM, again lying over the same lie bundle. So it, it takes a while to unravel on this in terms of vector bundle with addition data. I don't want to do it because I do not have the time, um, uh, but it's possible. It is quite pleasant, um, <coughs> but for for our purpose, somehow we do not uh, we do not need to do it. You can just stay on this very abstract level. Does the notation M suggest that it's independent of choice of L? It depends on L, it depends on G, it depends on the G, on C, on N, yes. Okay. But I, it's yeah. just not written for M. Okay. Yes. Thanks. And one thing you have to observe here is, uh, in this case, uh, this, this one is very nice. By, by Soviet Western theorem, this is a phi space, right? And the GM acting by some uh, diagonal scalings. So this, this space is a vector space. And the genic fibers of this map, this, this map is this M is locally finite type, and genic fibers is an abelian scheme. That's one of the features that you're going to be using. Um, so, you know, one of the you know, I really don't want, don't want, you, don't want to, um, to redo the, the theory of spectron hitching, spectron curve and so on. But one of the, the very nice way I keep thinking in when I had to think about this, just think about this. It look very much like you have a surface, like maybe P2, and you have a family of curve, like a fixed degree, varying on surface, right? And uh, this space, the phi, so the, this A is, is this, this linear system of curve, right? And the fibers is going to be the compactified Jacobians, classified of, of, the, of the curve. So when the, genetically the curve is going to be, to be smooth, and the MA, the fiber, is going to be the Picard, Labandon, over M. So that is very good. Uh, I mean, general is more complicated, but that's a very good picture to think of. Right. All right. <laughs> and uh, so, and the, the main features, you know, coming from our study of this kind of stucky nest business, you have a, a something else that is a P. P is a smooth group scheme, but you have stucky group smooth scheme over A, where P act on M. So P A act on M, A in family. This is our basic features, right? So the so this is the, the main tenet. Is that M is actually very difficult to study. You don't know much concrete information about M, but you know almost everything about P. So, in, uh, 
no, not much explicit knowledge about M, but all, almost complete knowledge about P. Because P reflects on, on this on this smooth group scheme of regular centralizers, then you can do all computation with, you know much about M, but the thing is that the cohomology of M, of M over A is essentially, I mean, if you can see what it mean, determined by P. Right? So we don't know much about M, but you can basically compute its cohomology relatively over A because you know about P. And, uh, uh, and that is what, what I, I try to spell this out. And, and next one is why you really want to compute the cohomology of M because it, it, it really is the Obertegon that we are interested in. So for example, uh, we know that the, um, uh, so also there is some, some very nice, uh, there's, there's nice uh, open subset, A elliptic of A over which uh, H is proper. So that is the usual, in the trace formula, this is the elliptic locus, or anisotropic locus, and uh, uh, and so M is also smooth. So we are very much in the, uh, the where you can apply the Lean purity theory. So that is going to be our main tools. So apply to understand what? Understand the cohomology of the fibers of M. And you know that if, now if A is in, now, is a K point, K is a finite fins, elliptics. Then uh, we know that the number of points of the mass of uh, MA of K is really the, the S, the orbitals, global orbitals, phi, where phi is one of D, where L is OX of D, so you go to these divisors. So this is the number of points of the fibers is really the the globons, you know, the orbital goals you are interested in. And as in the space stabilization, you can write these things. And so this is a, a trace of forbearance, the forbearance on the cohomology of QL, right? This is the, by the Gordelie Lepsius trace formula. And we have a couple of parallels here because you have this is the um, uh, OA phi is uh, the, this, the kind of this pre stabilization. Then we can write this as a sum of a kappa in some, some, some finite groups that we uh, explained in Tasho talk of, of all OK kappa phi. Right. For kappa icon one is really a stable of the goals and have the, the kappa analog of this. Right. And this decomposition you, you reflect very nicely geometrically because you have just this um, we have this action of a PA act on this. Because PA act on MA. And on Komori, the group that act is a group of complement. Right. And you just have the same as the trace sum. Is it you know if you set up things nicely, it, it really is the same thing. Kappa is a is a group of character of these component groups, and then this trace of forbidness on this QL, where the group, the symmetry group, act by this kappa. So you know you set up things adequately, you can matching term by term, the trace of forbidness on the kappa part of the cohomology. Is the same as the kappa one the goals, right? All right. So this is the the setup. That is why we are interested in the 
in the cohomology of hitching fibers and how, how the, this pi not appear act on it, right? But of course, you know, we introduce all this to avoid to have to work to, to do this fiber by fibers because it's undoable. The, this is a cohomology of hitching fibers operator is basically not, not accessible to space computation. You do it because you can do it in family, right? Now you have this um, H. So now I replace it by elliptic. So this is A. This is proper map. So I'm, I already restrict myself to the elliptic locus. And M is smooth. Then I have this, uh, this direct image, right? Maybe simplification, cohomologies. And uh, this is acted on by pi naught of p, right? So pi naught of p is <coughs> pi naught of p is not a, a single abelian group, but the shift. This is the shift of abelian groups, which um, uh, interpolate on this I, pi naught of p a. So set the pi naught of p a, p of a is the same as pi naught of p a. So this action, fiber-wise, can be interpolated in the shortness of some shift on some, some complex of shift. Right? Uh, you may have to take the perverse cohomology or cohomology, but it, that is technical thing. Sorry, what does this, what does this last row take? So, so this is the, a, a shift of group. I'm just claiming they, they exist, this shift. So that fibers is the same as complex. Pi not a PA. Pi not a P, then A is just. Mm. Sorry? So PA is, the, so every A you have the curve of C to, um, to this uh, G mod, mod G, mod GM. So I have J here, the regular centralizers. And I just put this thing back, so I have JA. Is a now smooth group scheme, and PA is is the toxus, is JA toxus. JA toxus. It's a group point. It's pick a group point of JA toxus. Yes. So I mean, it's in, in my. Kind of example, you know, in image, this A is a curve over a surface, right? And this, then PA is a Jacobian, so classically live on, on this curve, right? So it doesn't have any problem if the curve is smooth and reducible. But now, if the, for example, the curve gets reducible, right? Then this pi not PA may have a jumps because it has, has Z to the, to the set irreducible component of the curve. So this kind of, of, of uh, this captures some some part of the of kind of rough topology of the of this curve on the on the surface. Right? So in general, it, you know, in kind of GN land, you only have z, z squared, z three. But when you you know the thing is when you look at other groups, this 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 guy get a torsion part. So this is torsion. You can have you know, we're elliptic, and this is torsion in non-trivial. So, you know, it's kind of a little bit awkward, not very difficult, but this is, you, you have to decompose something, not with respect to a group, but a, a shift of groups. But then you can do some kind of trivialization, say some kind of A tilde to A, some kind of a tan cover, can be explicitly defined, so that pi naught of P, restrict to A tilde, is a quotient of the constant group scheme, constant shift a value lambda, where lambda is a group of co-character of the torus, of the maximum torus. So this, um, so you, you can, this is become, this is, you can just look at this. And so when you decompose, so now you have kind of lambda acting on this. And so this H star of QL become direct sum of home from kappa now going from lambda to c star of h star of ql 
So this is exactly in the same as case in the in the dual torus. Right? So after some kind of small, you know, some covering, W covering, you can get a decomposition. Right? And so this the point that instead of working with this vector space, they on this vector can can be made into 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 shift and actually the pure pure complex of shift because there are all direct factors of this of this thing which is pure by the Lin theory, right? And uh, and also when you take the trace four banners, you you get to this O kappa A, which is the object of the of the study. And so in this one, when you arrive at this point, the, the geometric stabilization can be, can be stated rather very nicely. So when you have, uh, when you have a kappa, then you have a H, endoscopic groups, and you have AH mapped into AG. And it so happens that when you go to this Tinder, it is even a cause embedding. And uh, the statement is become that. Uh, uh, so let let me call this thing um, uh, big K. Then the K kappa is the same. Is supported by H of H, and over this is isomorphic to the uh, to the K H table. It is some shift. So now the, this is uh, the statement of geometric stabilization. You take the, the direct image of the Hitchin vibration, at least of the elliptic locus, and then you decompose it with the action of this, 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 this symmetry of the PK groups. So decompose it, and then you get to the different components, and this component to match up with the stable component of the endoscopic groups. Exactly. Sorry, is that... Uh, Actually, I, I have two questions. The yes. first is, um, you told us that over a W cover, uh, the component group is a quotient of the constant shape. Yes. But then you rewrote it in terms of the dual torus. Yes, because the constant shape is actually a lambda, the co-character group. Okay, so this is just... You can... Okay, uh, this, yeah. Yes. Uh, yes. B b if I, I remain on the on, on A, it become W conjugate of kappa, so this is conjugacy class in G hat. So this this kind of covering should allow me to to do Wilmer in T hat instead of conjugacy class in G hat. Sorry, can you explain this point? So how did you get from here to the endoscopic data So so this thing now now when I over A Tinder, I can take this kappa part. Right? This is the this is the uh, direct factors of cohomology Hitchin vibration, Rodify kappa, right? And the theorem is that this part, I can, when, when I have a kappa, I can have H, right? Can you explain this because we haven't seen this? So kappa is, um, well, let's do the K and G is adjoint and it's very simple, and G adjoint to G hat is simply connected, and kappa is some semi simple element. H hat is the, is the, it's just the centralizer of kappa. Which is connected, and H is the dual one of, of H hat. So otherwise, I have to do some some some, some twist. Yes. But it's just well, matchup. Of course, kappa was a co-character into T check. Now you identify an element of T check. No, it is an element of T check. It's a co-character of lambda. Lambda is 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 a, is a home of of, of, of G M to T, and the home of T hat to C star, right? So it's an element of teaching. Yeah. So it's very quickly complex canonical. So you can even do everything is more canonical by not doing this thing, but it, it gets messy. But then you explain that the endoscopic data correspond to a decomposition. So so when I have this kappa, so it, it leaves over this A tinder G. But the first theorem is actually it it is supported on some small set exactly the same as 18 dub H. With the H, so that's H hat, is G hat kappa, when G is adjoint. Right? 
And, uh, and then moreover, when you rest switch to 18 dot H, it's exactly the sustainable part on H after some, some good twist. And so when you, uh, now when you take the trade of forbidness, you get exactly to the, to the, uh, you know, choose a kind of global identities that correspond to fundamental lemma. And when you get to fundamental lemma, then you have to decompose to product. And you can do it again by a coson section, otherwise you get to troubles. All right, so now, the, uh, at this point, you, you, you see that um, you have some kind of a pure complex, and you want to prove that some kind of two pure complex are isomorphic. Now, up to simple, some simplification. And then there's some kind of general principle. To do this, using the support theorem, so the support principle. Okay. So we are, you know, the problems, this guy kind of uh, geometric stabilization theorem, you know, amounts to, um, uh, to, to this kind of very general things. You have a, let, let S to be some, some scheme of a finite, you know, a finite type of some fit K, finite fin K. And then you have, uh, uh, you have M and N uh, the pure complex of sheave. That you want that M to be isomorphic to N. That you want this. That trace function are the same in some good groups uh, up to some simplification. Is that what you want? And of course you cannot no, they are basic. You can that that at the end you want that the fibers they have the same trace everywhere, but you cannot compute the fibers. So the thing that you want to compute in number fiber to deduce is genomes. So for that have some control on M and N. So this is called the support. So let's call this because M is a complex of sheaf pure. Then by BBD, there is some version Delin and Gaber. You know that M over over K bar. So when the base chain of a K bar is isomorphic to direct sum of simple and perverse shift. Uh, so I use K there, so I cannot use K. So let me call it, um, um, Q. And the Q is simple and perverse shift. Uh, over uh, over S tensor K K bar, and N is some integers. So on on pure complex is isomorphic to this kind of sum, right? And every simple perverse shift is can be classified. There are there is some some support, some uh, some irreducible close up schemes, and which is a quite local system on the open part of it, and the median extension. So uh, so. You can have the support of M is a, is a set, a finite set of support of Q. Right? Support of simple perversive is you are defined. And this is so that Q of N is a DJ factor, direct factor of M for some N, for some N. So this gives you a choose a finite set of a, a close up scheme of your scheme. And, and just now uh, let's um, assume that that S to be a finite set, a stratification. A close sub a close up scheme, close irreducible 
sub scheme of S and assume that that both super of sub of M and sub of N are included in this S. So we have upper bound of the support, right? Then I claim that to prove then uh, to prove that M is isomorphic to N in the trace for Bendesen, it is enough to prove that um, uh, the that trace over x of mx is equal to trace over x of nx for x genic so gen, you know in, in some 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 dense subset of an element s alpha in s so let's say you have this is the whole thing then you have this strata this strata this strata right and what you have to check is some 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 part some overall and for each strata you can have to check it's on on some any any non empty subset and that is enough right and and why this is um why this is nice? So just think about the, you know, my toys example. When you look at the family of a curve or P two, right? You know the 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 stratification is going to be. Then we'll come back to that. Is going to be stratification by by geometric genders. So the, there is a kind of uh, open subset where the where your plane curve is smooth and irreducible. And then you then you can get singularities. So the there's a discrepancy between arithmetic genus and the geometric genus. And that by that data invariant that we're going to stratify, right? But there's a very important theory, I mean in classical geometries, which can inspire on this is the the theory theorem that when delta is constant, there's a locus when all the singularities are just double point. Right? So basically, to check identity, you can reduce to okay, that one point, where you can just do calculation by hand. So, um, so this is kind of uh, rem inspired by this. Right? So anyway, uh, come back to our situation of geometric stabilization. What we have to determine is Sorry, yes. Those two closed subsets themselves, what advantage or what advantage to say that we can take any finite subset of closed irreducible subschemes? Well, I mean, you want to S to be as small as possible, right? For example, if S is just a whole thing in the whole scheme, yeah. then you can just check, check this your equalities on 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 some 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 dense open subset of the whole things. But it may happen that it cannot be whole thing, it can be smaller set. But then you had to check it more like either the generic point of this strata, but the only generic point of some strata. I think there is some misunderstanding about what support of M means. Support of M doesn't mean the support of M. It means the it means the union of supports of the irreducible component. Of the supports of the irreducible component. So all the supports of all the irreducible components. Ah. That's so one of them you have to check generically the quality. Mm. That makes sense. Thank you. So, for example, if you, you to 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 prove this fundamental lemma, in this case, you can it, it can you prove that the uh, the support of of this k of kappa is actually equal to eighteen dot h. This is script S, yes. Sorry for my handwriting, yes. So in this high chain, actually the on support are actually just one single term. For the for the stable part, the support of the stable part is the whole 18 there. 
and for the kappa block, exactly the 18 dot of h, right? And so to prove this inequality, you can just prove this on some, some, some dense open subset, no matter how small it is, of 18 dot of h, then you are done. And then you can do it by, you know, to, to bet, put yourself in the best situation. And so this is actually the, the theorem that I proved. That is the most technical part, and not not like this, but maybe some, some very small support. So somehow you can just you know when you do counting point, you can just put ourselves away from this very small support, and then we done. But in the proof that I um, I work out is uh, extremely intricate, so I don't really want to go into it, but I just want to explain. Uh, some really very nice progress on this question of support, and this will explain a lot of things. Is the theorem of uh, uh, general support theorem? Due to uh, McLaurin, and Shandy. Sorry? What are the, the very small supports? Is this a limitation uh, of the political characteristics? No, no, a little bit, but it's also a limitation, but because I had to, yes, this is, um, yes, this, this is limited of uh, political characteristics where I had to use the cotrist McPherson calculation, you know, the, some global to local, and I had to use some ampleness, and it, yeah. Yes, so this is uh, on characteristic zero, this, it can be removed. On characteristic piece of technical problem that, that I, it shouldn't be there, but I just don't know how to do it. Why do you have tilde still? These are in A, right? Why tilde? It, a tilde is, 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 a, is a subset of A tilde. But why A tilde? Are we, A tilde was a base change of Okay, so they let base change to A tilde, yes. Yes. And then the bottom is all of A tilde? Sorry? Yeah, yeah, the whole thing. So let me uh, put myself into this. So in the proof of this, one of the main features of this is that I, I use very heavy action of P on, on, on M. And the genetic fibers are built in scheme and so on. That is very, you know, that is my main tunes. But it's very kind of, very uh, manifest generalization where there's no more group action and no more more in scheme. It's really about topological convention break map. So this is the, the map from that f from, from x to y. The x to y had to be smooth. Algebraic varieties. And that f is to be proper. Right? And then you look at the you want the sub uh, upper bar of this. So this is a pure complex. And then you look at on the simple um, perverse sheath occurring as direct image. And they're actually very nice, very, a priori can be any, you can do for sub scheme. But the micro sanitary that they can, can be limited to a very small set like this, so called the higher discriminant set. So, how it works, so we, um, so this is going to be, um, so generically, so this, um, so F, of course, this is smooth on characteristic zero. And maybe they had to assume that characteristic K to be zero, I think. There's some argument on tangent, kind of, uh, I think this guy kind of looks suspicious of characteristic P, uh, but he should be able to generalize it. <coughs> so in characteristic zero, this mapping will generally smooth. Um, so. Let's look at the, uh, uh, let's look at y naught is a set of y in y such that f minus of x is smooth. So the fiber is smooth. So this is a, some kind of a dense open subset. So you said f is well, this is smooth, such a big variety, then the map has to be over on characteristic zero. And now uh, y1 is bigger. We do not ask that the fiber is smooth, but when we add one dimension, it becomes smooth. The fiber is smooth. So th there exists a small curve uh, containing C, containing Y, so C inside Y, 
such that f minus 1 of c is smooth, right? So instead of just looking at the fibers, you have some kind of blurry vision, one dimension blurry vision, then it becomes smooth. And this is y1. And y, and so-called y of r, so there exists uh, some kind of r-dimensional submanifolds. M con you know, passing by y and containing a y so that f minus 1 of m is smooth. Right. So we have kind of this bigger and bigger. It's become very hard to read. Uh, what is it? So the first one is y in y such that f inverse of y. F inverse of y is smooth, right? The fiber is smooth. The curve C, the very small C curve C containing y but inside inside the base y such so that f minus one of c is smooth and then r is just replace c by some r dimensional manifolds <coughs> and so this gives you a, a you know a open subset containing each other and the stratification so let so let call this maybe y not like this y1 like this y r and let y r is the complement of y Y R, so this is close. And the theorem of Big Lorin is saying that this support theorem is contained inside the irreducible component of this Y R. That's it. So we look at this kind of higher discriminant locus defined by this kind of uh, uh, how you know how much dimension we have to add to be smooth, and this is actually very you know it's very easy to see from computation point of view. It, 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 so this is your x, this is your y, right? So the y is in y not. That means the the this thing is the fiber is smooth. If at every point. The tangent space maps subjectively to tangent space here. Right? That is why not. Right? Now you have some, some singular curve. Right? So at this point, it's no longer subjective. Right? It is a singular point. And the condition that there exists a line inside the tangent space that is enough to add up with the image that becomes the whole space. Right? And how many dimensions you have to add up. But this one has to be chosen independent of the point here. The whole point of this, this C had to be fixed. So this, there exists a C, and this thing. All right. All right, so, so this is very nice. So that reduces your, the, uh, the set of, it's still a kind of large subset, but manageable. But that, you know, very complex, makes sense from the point hitching vibration. So some, So it is not as precise as the theorem that I proved. I can pinpoint exactly what is support. So this gives some, yes. So the theorem is what you've underlined there, that the support of that Yes. Circle, and then you go over all Rs? Yes, go over on R, an irreducible component of this circle. Yes. Okay. Yes, I win, I win, do it. So that's why I was saying that, you know, the Hitchin fibers is complicated, but it really, you can know it if you know the, the P, so the P acting on it. So we have the, oh. so for every A in A, you have the pi naught of PA, which kind of control endoscopy. But there is another one that can control the geometries that made the singularities that are called the delta invariant. How you can define it? So the, the PA, so assuming you go for elliptic, then it's going to be some B of some IA, so the finite group. So there's some, some, some classifies in space, a finite group, and time PA. And PA is just a smooth group scheme.
Yes. There's a PA and a PA there. Is it different So left and right. So this is a stack and this is a, a algebraic group. So I just remove the, the inertia here. You know, over algebraic clothes, you can split into some inertia type algebraic groups. Okay, the notation is TA and TA. Different. Different. This is a group. And now PA, I have the PA become PA naught time pi naught of PA. So I could actually make a lot of choice here. So now pi, P dot of A is, um, is a connected. Uh, commutative algebraic group, right? And by Chevalier theorem, I have a, I have a, a canonical uh, the visage as um, extension of an abelian varieties by uh, some connected affine group. Right. So generically, it is the this has no RA, so the whole thing is going to be abelian varieties. But as A degenerate, uh, this uh, environment get larger. So they identify delta of A is a dimension of this affine part. And so this is the invariant, and they can stratify A into union of A delta. The A delta is this is called delta constant stratification. A delta is A in A, so that delta of A is equal to delta, right? And it just so happened that the, this, this delta stratification Is is of the same as the Miglorini Shandy Higher discriminant. Stratification. Right? So the uh, so the So of course this is much much more straighter than what we really know that it's exactly one straighter, but already it's quite something that is just reduced to this this kind of very well defined from group theoretic that is just a delta constant, and what is really nice here is this kind of delta constant stratification makes sense in general by this this notion of higher discriminant, and the support had to be some of this, maybe maybe it, that it is not but. But, but that's actually difficult for me to check, but at least I have a very nice upper bound. And again, you know, this, the, this then, uh, when you come back to these pictures of um, a plane curve, so we have this family of plane curve of some given degree, right? And then the delta certification is, it just measures the difference between the arithmetic genus and the geometric genus. And you know that on this delta stratum, there's a dense open subset consisting of only double point curve. So what you have you had to check? You can check on double point of curve. That is usually not so hard to check. So that is how, why this, uh, this idea of, of higher discriminant somehow seemed to match very well with this Severi theorem. Yes. So you mentioned many times this example of the spectral curve. But yes. I don't think that everybody here knows it. So would you like to keep this for the Q&A session and tell us something about that? Well, uh, actually, what I have to tell the, the, but the people okay. are not familiar with it. So all right, all right, sure, sure. <laughs> anyway, so the, this is the, you know, because this fact is very general and it, in any kind of have group action, it just makes sense very well. Then you kind of hope that, although we cannot, you know, it seems to be very difficult to generalize the argument I had for the algebra in general, but using Miglo region is very, it's kind of softer and you can, you can should be able to do it in general. Uh, so I, I don't have so much time to, but I, I, I want to add uh, another approach to this that doesn't use the, 
doesn't use this uh, support theorem, but use the periodic integration instead. Uh, so very nice. Oh, by the way, one before doing that, I want to add that on, on the, my discussion, the entirely focus on the elliptic locus, where the Hitchin map is is uh, is proper. So, uh, and uh, has generalized it to the to the whole Hitchin base, uh, or at least on genetic regular semi simple. Uh, so, uh, so instead of taking the whole stack of Hitchin fibers, you can look at stack of stable Hitchin pairs. And it's just so also very some of one the miracles is when you count Higgs bandon, uh, stable Higgs bandon, it just falls on the on the weighted orbital integrals. So it just uh, kind of just work perfectly. <clears throat> All right. So now let's say one word about this work by uh, 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 by uh, Groshnik and this and Ziegler. And so they, so no more perversions. But it is some tools of kind of quite very more elementary, the copyright integrations. And the, the tools here is the, the mirror symmetries. And the Langlands dualities. So the, the, that is a, uh, uh, some kind of basic fact that had been observed by Hitchin from the very beginning of the story, that when G and G check uh, are dual, uh, dual uh, semi-simple groups in the center of Langlands, then the Hitchin fibers of MG and MG check are mirror symmetry to each other, so they're in the same base. Uh, are, are mirrors in a very precise end. It's not a, a, a roughly, but it, it's completely mirror in these pictures. So let's look at this uh, kind of decomposition. When A is some, some, some very large open subset of A, then PA is a bit form, and this is the billion varieties. So this is essentially billion varieties, but adding with a finite group, a component, and finite inertia groups. And you switch this into, into Z check, then you have the, the BG check of A time P G check of A naught time pi naught of P G check of A. And it just so happened that these this are dual abelian varieties. And these finite groups are exchanged by dualities also. So the, the, the dual of the component group for G is the, is the inertia group for G check and vice versa. And so this, um, this, this is, uh, this, this is the, a theorem due to all complex number due to uh, Donaghy and Pantef. over C, and by to Chen and Zhu over any fins. And it, in this proof, it uses very crucially the, the, regu the disc regular centralizer. I think I don't have the time to dis dis discuss it, but, but it's really to know the, the complete knowledge of regular centralizers. Anyway, then the, the proof go like this. So essentially, when you, if you ignore this uh, component group, an inertia group, you have a uh, vibration where genetic fibers are dual abelian scheme, right? And um, so what they do is just look at some, some singular fibers and look at the tube around that singular fibers. The, the, the tube. And assume that Mg, so you have to replace Mg by the, first by the, by the, the, by the core space, right? Because you cannot do integration on the on some stack that doesn't make any sense. It's, 
very self-theoretical notion of integration. So by doing this, this thing is no longer smooth. But just assume that they are smooth to simplify. So when they are smooth, instead of counting point on the singular fibers, you can just calculate the volumes of the tube around it, right? By, co by comparing the volumes, you can do it by integration. So this kind of, kind of Fubidis to this base. And because then you can, you can ignore on the singular fibers, only on the genetic fibers are the variety that remains. So basically you get, what you get is some, uh, some integrons over the base, a very complicated function, but both sides are the same functions. So that is how, how, you know, a lot of high measure fixing need to be done, but that is the argument that you, you counting the volume of the tubes and by Fubini's, and it becomes the integral over the same way of the same functions. And that, that is how, how it works. But now this, this, this work, it doesn't work like this for hitching vibration because it, when you go from the moduli stack to the moduli space, it's no longer smooth. And then the, the volume is no longer the, the set of finite point, right? And it, then what now, it, what happens is it's okay. It's not a, It's not. It's not the the, the, the number of, of a point on the on the singular fiber. But it's something else, and this counting formula that in doing the counting you get on to call the coendoscopic of G and coendoscopic of G check, and then we put on the what you can play around with this pi not a PA pi not PA check. You just get a, a family of lot of equalities, and then put them together. You get to the same the same fundamental lemma. So that is the idea of, of, uh, of, uh, of, of, of this, Goshenik, this and Ziegler. Uh, so it's very different. It's not, nothing is no longer to control the support of perverse shift. It really based on dualities. So every time we have some kind of duality phenomenon that appears, there is a chance of applying this, this interior technique is somehow still simpler than doing this perverse shift, right? So by just to conclude my lectures, the that, you know, there's kind of whole apparatus to do either perverse sheath, the composition theorem, support theorem, or periodic integration. But somehow the, the, the basic information is you really want to understand very well the regular centralizers in every situation in order to do, to, to do the calculation. Where either on the case of this duality phenomena or to compute this delta constant certification, it requires to understand these uh, regular centralizers. Uh, so um, that I want to discuss uh, next time.